guitar. I love guitar and one of my favorite guitarists in the world is named Jason Isbell. He's a singer, songwriter, and guitarist. He's a triple threat and he just released a new album. Let me put my guitar up and we'll talk a little bit about that album. Hi, I'm Morgan Hyman. I'm a stand-up comedian based in Lubbock, Texas, but today I'm going to be reviewing Jason Isbell in the 400 Units new album, Weather Veins. It is Jason's eighth album overall and his fifth with the 400 unit. Uh, if you count the covers records, uh, Georgia Blue in there, uh, you can add one to those, but since it's a cover record, I don't really count it. But I did get it on red vinyl. Uh, I finished listening to it in its entirety. It just came a few days ago, but I've been real busy, but uh, it is fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about the songs on the record. So let's take a look at the track listing. Those are 13 new songs by Jason Isbell in the 400 unit. Uh, this record was produced by Jason. It's the first record of his own that he has produced since 2011's Here We Rest. Uh, every record since uh, Southeastern, his breakout record has been produced by Dave Cobb. So in advance of the album, Weather Veins, four songs were released uh, for fans to check out uh, Death Wish, Middle of the Morning, uh, Save the World, and Cast Iron Skillet. And in fact, Jack White of the White Stripes recorded a version of Death Wish that he released. And it's super cool. It's a really interesting interpretation of the album. And it's just amazing to me that uh, two artists I love, you know, have admiration for each other like that. Because they're on very different levels. But, uh, you know... You can't deny Jason's greatness. I mean, Tom Petty was a fan before he passed. Um, he's got a lot of famous fans. It's really cool. But if you haven't heard that cover of Death Wish, check it out. Um, Middle of the Morning is a great track. I really like that one. Um, Save the World. Um, it's about, you know, school shootings and just how crazy thing. I mean, if you don't like Jason's political agenda, you probably shouldn't really be listening to his records because um, it's all over the place. I mean, it's been there since the beginning. Uh, since he was in the truckers, even. Um, Cast Iron Skillet, again, you know, I mean, he he mentions an interracial relationship in the song. Um, but uh, Jason's wife, uh, Amanda, is from Lubbock, Texas, my hometown. And he mentions Texas a few times on this album, which is kind of not... He mentions the South a lot, but I don't really recall him uh, mentioning... Uh, Texas even got a song called King of Oklahoma here, but in the uh, song Strawberry Morning, he mentions the town Post and some other references make me think that's referring to Post, Texas, uh, not too far from Lubbock. And then, of course, uh, he uh, references Towns Van Zant in the song When We Were Close, which I assume is about uh, Jason's friend. Uh, who passed in uh, 2020, uh, Justin Towns Earl. I think they were estranged, but, um, and then of course, if that name sounds familiar, Justin is the son of uh, singer-songwriter Steve Earl, another fantastic artist. And then of course he was named after Towns Van Zandt. Uh, so for me, the last three tracks on here, White Beretta, This Ain't It, and Miles are some of the, Best songs on this album. Some of the best songs Jason's ever done. Um, White Beretta is, it's a story song. It's not dissimilar in kind of its uh, overall uh, tone and structure uh, from a lot of his songs. Uh, but this one, I just, I don't know, the lyrics really spoke to me. Uh, the the references to an abortion and, and baptism and things like that. Uh, Jason does have a background in the Church of Christ, which I uh, I also do. So some of those, some of that language really hit home for me, uh, terminology that he uses. And then uh, This Ain't It, one of the funkiest tracks. It's just kind of a, a, a love song, you know, for a woman who's, you know, marrying the wrong guy. But uh, it sounds like something, you know, that the Black Crows would have done or maybe the Stones, but it's just a lot of fun. I was dancing. Uh, I was a little baked too. So, uh, but uh, Miles though, 
That's the one I really want to talk about. At various points in the song, he sounds like he's channeling Tom Petty, who was a fan of his um, Pink Floyd, the Beatles. Uh, there's probably half a dozen other bands you could probably pinpoint that uh, he's probably uh, referencing there, maybe consciously, maybe unconsciously. But uh, that's that's one of the best songs that, in my opinion, he's done. Just the lyrics, uh, the 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 changes of the song. I mean, it's kind of in... it. I don't know, you have to listen to it to know, but it's so different. I can't imagine Dave Cobb producing something like that. Uh, he probably wouldn't have made it sound anything like Jason did, but I'm really, really, really uh, stoked uh, for this record and uh, that song in particular. I'm gonna be listening to this a lot. And I know I'm preaching to the choir, uh, most likely, but uh, you know, this is a great record. Check it out all of his albums. Uh, Amanda Shires, too. His his wife is a great songwriter uh, and fiddle player. And uh, yeah, just uh, so glad this came out. And uh, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be wearing this one out just like I have all of his other albums.